In part one of this whole review, which is an in-depth, unsponsored and unaffiliated review of Glossika based on my experience with it in a number of languages, I did outline some pros and a number of cons, but unfortunately I spent more time on cons than pros because that was just my experience with it. It was mostly bad. But most people don't care about that as much as they care about just whether it works. Most people want to know, quite simply, if they were to do Glossika all the way through, would it actually work? To which my answer is yes and no. It would work in that if I watch something in a completely foreign language, like let's say Georgian, I would currently get nothing out of that linguistically. Like the language itself would not help me to understand anything that was going on. And assuming that I did enough Glossika, it would improve that situation. Now if I were to do say 200 reps a day for 18 months, then that might even get me quite far. I might be able to understand a series sort of, and I might even be able to push my way through a novel. Now I'm not saying that those things would be completely comprehensible, they'd be a very, very hard slog, but Glossika would help with the situation. Now your comprehension and the level to which it improved would obviously be better or worse depending on the language, but even with, for example, French, nothing can actually prepare you for passing the sounds at the speed at which native speakers say them. The longest sentence I saw in Glossika was maybe 13 or 14 words, but native speakers will sometimes go 40 words barely taking a breath. The skill of passing sounds and interpreting that language and then interpreting that as the actual meaning of what is being said is far from being just a linguistic skill. There's a lot more to it than that and any program that teaches the language doesn't teach you those skills. It just teaches the linguistic properties of the language. Now at a rough estimate, the kind of time that you're looking at to complete the whole course in Glossika, at least the way they intend for us to use it, would be about 360 hours. And the first problem with that is that that's going to bore most people to tears. I could barely stand doing this in a brand new language for one hour, let alone hundreds of hours. I would much rather watch a series that I understand basically nothing of for three hours than do this for just one hour. Now of course you could do a lot less of it, like let's say 20 minutes a day for a whole year, which is about 120 hours, and that would be a much wiser use of time, especially if you then spent the remaining 240 hours on content in the target language. But as the amount of time spent on Glossika goes down, the benefit that it's supposedly designed to give us decreases. And the whole thing seems pretty centered around this idea of subconscious automation, like you just look at something and you know exactly what it means. And to get that out of Glossika, you will need to spend a massive amount of time on it. And to be perfectly honest, anyone who really did have the patience for that would have the patience also for much more beneficial activities like say trying to plow through books that they don't understand, watching series, thousands of hours of them that they don't understand. And all of that would do more than Glossika, which requires this massive amount of patience but doesn't really get you that far for the zen kind of practice that you'll need to endure. Hi there, this is the five days after shooting the original video and having inevitably decided to add some details, Lamont, here to add some details. I had some comments on the first half of the review by people saying that there's a specific way that they use it. In that regard, I agree that due to the massive amount of native audio on Glossika, it can be of great use if harnessed properly. I've always stood behind the idea that you can use a good tool poorly or a bad tool well and that the latter is actually far preferable. Now Glossika isn't a bad tool, but it does have some frustrations that really require overcoming in my opinion, but you can definitely use Glossika to move towards a very specific goal within the greater goal of fluency. But the thing is, most people who are looking at a product like Glossika are not treating their language learning like athletes treat their sport. Having a certain framework within which you've identified different weaknesses and areas that you'd like to work on is far beyond most people's level of thinking about improvement in a language. I just can't see that being Glossika's target market. And I also think that with the exception of some of the more obscure languages, which I'll come back to in a bit, most people who are that committed to their own learning are capable of finding better resources and more engaging methods on their own. Look, if you're already using Glossika, whether for a specific purpose or just in your language learning in general, and you find it beneficial, 
I'm not saying that you don't exist because I had a different opinion. I'm not suggesting that at all. I'm suggesting that the issues that I brought up, especially in the first half of this review, are real things. It does have these problems, no doubt. With the exception of more obscure languages where it's hard to get native audio, saying that you can use Glossika in a beneficial way, to me that sounds a little bit like telling a professional marathon runner that they can use the joggers that you just got them out of nowhere to aid their training. It's like, yes, okay, maybe they can, they may be perfectly decent joggers, but they don't need it. They've already got all the tools they need within their system to train well. To me, the big sell, the big draw card that Glossika has is as a huge mine of sentences read aloud by native speakers. It's great for that if you don't mind the occasional mistranslation or non-idiomatic use of the language or even just wrong use of the language. But if your target language finds itself anywhere in the top 30 or maybe even 40 for the amount of material that is available in that language, like let's say a speaking population of 2 million or a language that just produces a large amount of content for its size, like say Icelandic, then I can't really see the benefit of Glossika. Now, if you're not sure if your target language fits that description, it does. You will already know if you're learning a language so obscure that Glossika would be considered a really good resource in that language. Because that's really where Glossika comes into its element. It's with those obscure languages and dialects like Wenjunese and Taiwanese and Uzbek. And as I mentioned in part one of this review, nine of those, I think it's all the endangered ones, are actually free. That is fantastic. I am not going to criticize that decision for a second and Duolingo also do a little bit in this regard teaching endangered languages and sort of obscure minority languages this is always a worthy endeavor in my opinion keep it up but uh-huh I'm back yeah I'm gonna be turning up a few times so get used to it some of the decisions as to which languages are considered endangered are a little bit questionable the example that was brought to my attention was Irish which isn't free despite actually having fewer speakers at the moment than its cousin or its relative language Scottish Gaelic which is free and far fewer than its other relative Welsh which is also free now UNESCO list both Irish and Scottish Gaelic as definitely endangered. So I would encourage Glossika to reconsider that decision. But it does bring us to the sticky question of price because it's no secret that Glossika is one of the most expensive options out there. For example, I just purchased a whole year subscription to Busu for only as much as one and a half months of Glossika wood. So this is not at all me saying that you should go and use Busu instead. I actually only bought it so that I could do an updated review. But I think we can agree that at three times the price, even for the student subscription of Glossika, if you're eligible for that, it better be at a whole new level. It's not even close to being on a whole new level. I mean, it might be a bit better, yes, but at this price, it needs to be a lot better. Another thing that I just paid for was a month subscription to Language Reactor Premium. That's $5 a month. Now, I would probably take one month of Language Reactor over one month of Glossika, but at this price, I'm actually comparing six months of Language Reactor to one month of Glossika, which is a no-brainer. I also think that the way some things come across on the pricing page is at best amusingly untrue, such as when they describe the $30 a month as a small fee, or when they say that 17% off for paying for an entire year up front is deeply discounted. Like 17% off for paying for an entire year is not that big of a discount. In fact, most things will offer about like 20 to 40% off. But at worst, the pricing page can actually be a bit deceptive. The annual plan is listed at $25 a month rather than the 30 that you'd pay month by month. But then it says get two months free with the annual plan. Of course I know to check these things but it reads like you'll pay $300 for 12 months but get 14 months but you won't. You'll just get the 12 months and how they're figuring that that's two months free is by comparing it to the monthly price which would have you paying $300 for just 10 months. In other words, the way the page is laid out, it's advertising that discount twice in two different ways, which makes it seem as though you'll receive two different discounts. Now I don't think that Glossika did this deliberately, but I have actually seen someone completely misunderstand this and I personally think it should be changed. And by the way, I, 
that is editing Lamont, who's adding all this stuff in, have one more thing to say in like a minute about pricing and particularly about discounts, which is what we all care about. So I'll see you then. So basically it seems to me, now bear in mind that this is entirely my speculation, but it does seem that by asking so much for the popular courses like French, Spanish, Mandarin, German, they're basically asking you to give to the charity of endangered languages that they then offer for free. And look, that's completely cool. I am not suggesting that that is wrong or that they shouldn't do that. But I would still suggest that one, they could surely still bring the price down a little bit. And two, if that is what they are doing, they could just be open about that and maybe even say, look, this is the price for a normal course, but would you like to pay an extra $2 a month to help us keep endangered languages alive and keep adding courses to our selection? Because otherwise, the way it comes across to me right now, like the way things seem as they stand, when I do what I do, which is to look at a program in depth and all the pros and cons and everything, it really seems like Glossika is a case of the Emperor's new clothes. It's not that great a program. It's full of bugs and oddities and even occasional mistakes in the content. It's very hard to get it to give me what I would actually want from a program like this. And all of this comes at a huge price premium. So it basically seems like the price is there to distract you from the fact that it's just another program. So I now find myself in the somewhat weird situation of recommending Glossika wholeheartedly if you're learning one of the languages that they offer for free, like obviously, but probably the only time that I could even think about recommending that you actually pay for it is if you're learning one of the really unusual languages that they do charge for, like Mongolian or Armenian or Georgian. If that's the case, then this review should give you an idea of if it's going to be worth it in your specific situation. I told you I'd be back and as you can see, I'm a man of my word. So some of you will know that they do offer 55% off for students. That is if you have a student email address. So you can get that if you can get that. But, and this is why it wasn't in the first half of the video, around the time that my trial was ending, I did get sent an offer for me for 45% off. So I would say that they send that to everyone. So sign up for a trial if you're considering it. Wait till the trial ends, check your promo emails, you'll probably get offered 45% off. But it's only in that very rare situation where Glossika has a language that it's very hard to find material in, but is not one of the ones that they offer for free, that I would recommend that you even think about paying for it at all. Now, if you are learning one of the free languages, then obviously I have basically no complaints at all about the program. In fact, it's probably one of the richest sources of sentences with audio out there and in all likelihood you've already found it and by all means if you're thinking about learning something like Scots Gaelic or Welsh or Kurdish go and learn it I have nothing but love for people who do that but if my speculation about how Glossika structures this whole nine languages for free 55 languages paid for thing is correct then I can't really imagine that this is the best way to do it and to be as blunt as I'm comfortable with being the price is laughable. I mean, it could be a third of this and I would still be hesitant given the problems I've outlined here. Oh, and um, one last thing. I'm not actually going to tell you guys what my mysterious temptress language that I was having an unofficial fling with was because it didn't continue any further. And that's exactly why I didn't want to say something in the beginning because then you say something and then someone just sees that video and then they think you're learning that language and then in like a year or even two years they're going, oh, how's that language going? You're like, it's not going. It happened for like three days. Get over it. Hang on, that was actually a reference to part one of the video. So if you didn't see that, you'll have to go back and work out what I'm talking about there. I'm going to go and do whatever it is that I do. Bye.